in um, this video, I'm going to focus on how buffer functions work together with lines. So if we um, go back to QGIS in the situation we had before, where we had our layers and some points. What we want to do is we want to create a new layer. Let's call it the test line. And it's going to be a line geometry. And I'm going to set its um, projection coordinate system to our standard version here. And I'm going to give it a name attribute. It's only going to be one long. And I'm going to add this to my database. And automatically, it's also added to my, um, <clears throat> my layers. Good. If I bring this into edit mode and it say I'm going to use the snapping tool, so I've added the snapping tool and I'm going to draw a layout line from here to there and now let's call that for line A, draw a line from here to there and call that B and draw another line. Let's give that a bit of a zigzag down to there and call this line C. So I've got three lines and um, like I had three points before. Um, I'll just close the editing so it's written down to the file. If I now do a buffer tool, so I Go into my processing uh, toolbar. So basically, processing toolbar it brings in um, like that, and I can then use my buffer tool I used earlier. And I want to do a buffering around these, and let's say we want to say it to one hundred meters, <clears throat> and everyone that lives within the area can have some compensation because of noise or something like that and set the segments to 10 and leave end caps round and join style round little size of uh, i'll talk about these later and um keep this sort of off again so of course when i run this tool the 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 first thing we'll note is this air down here where we, um, if I click on my tool, I both have line A, B, and C represented. So if I automatically was going to count how many addresses were here, these will have three addresses, which of course wouldn't be very appropriate. So again, like with polygons, really consider that there are many situations where you might not want to have that dissolved by. The dissolve is off by default because if you have lots of objects and they do not overlap, then um, then it might be nice not to have the dissolve activated. And also the advantage that you have the attributes from your whatever you are buffering carried through to your new buffered layer. But there's also really many situations where you want to have a dissolve on it. So be careful with this thing about dissolve. Another thing to note is that if we um, look at our buffer and I'll just drag that underneath my lines um, and I'll just uh, style my lines a bit bigger. Um, big and blue. So um, what we can note here is that what do we mean about how should we handle these ends at the moment this element we had in our buffer tool when we did our buffer on our lines we had this our end style round so that specified how this end should be our join style that specifies how this round should be so if I choose to say that I want, again, a distance of uh, 100 meters, 
I want these to be ended as flat. That means they will end exactly at the point. Square means that they will be extended to a square. But I set, set cut them as flat. And I'll cut these as milks here. And um, I will dissolve it. So now you can see the difference in the two solutions. That in this case, my um, I have this. Uh, so we have um, the different solutions here to how they are created. Um, one object. I'll go to my layers. So in this case here, this is um, the one that I just made. Um, it had a a, a, a milk a end on in the straight. That means that I have this little strange finger. It's um, it may be not really um, pleasant to look at, um, but natural because that bring that down. That's where our lines end. So this matter of fact, there's apparently a little a little sliver here. Shouldn't have been there, but um because those two are not at a right angle, they're opening a bit up here. So that's why we have this little angle. Um and um also note these cutting in this. So you can change your endpoints, how they are made, and your join points. And you can also decide whether or not to have your points or your li polygon lines um, merged together using the solve. Again, um, as always, you know, think about what you're doing. Um, the solve is um, takes a bit more time, and you lose your attribute. Um, but again, you might want to have the dissolve because you don't want to count areas twice. And if also consider what is the situation at the end of your lines. So um, what? how do you want your lines to end as rounds or squared or milk? And what influence does that have at points where they meet? So that was basics of doing buffering on lines.